And we are now very pleased to be joined by Holly Light, she the Regional Administrator for HUD in Westchester County. Holly, thank you very much for a few minutes. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Um, we'll get into uh, some of the developments in this case because seemingly we've been in a, on a loop here for the last few years on this. But what I wanted to do was um, I had a conversation uh, where this came up with some folks uh, over the last week. And there's a lot of confusion out there. Um, they hear some things from uh, the county executive in Westchester, and then they hear other things that are coming uh, from HUD. So I I'm going to give a few of the statements. I'm going to give you an opportunity to try and say what's rhetoric and reality here as best you can. Um, not long after coming into office, the county executive, um, he knew about the deal that was signed by his predecessor, but he still felt that this was huge overreach. In fact, he said, this is government gone wild, social engineering at its worst. Is HUD trying to re-engineer what Westchester County looks like? I think that that is definitely an overstatement of what's going on. What is being asked of Westchester is what is asked of every place in the country that receives federal funds. And it's simply that in order to comply with the Fair Housing Act, uh, municipalities and counties that receive funding have to uh, further fair housing in an affirmative way. Now, I think one of the key things here is this isn't about intent. HUD is not saying that there is intentional discrimination going on. It's about disparate impact. And that is simply an analysis of the impact that certain zoning regulations and zoning laws will have on minority populations. Um, and I think we have to really try to dial this back from the emotional fervor that it's gotten to and do that analysis to look at, are there impediments that are preventing uh, more racial equality in housing in Westchester? Once you get, though, to the undefinable turn about what is an impediment, and two people could look at a situation and come with two different conclusions, is that what you believe? And of course, there's politics always involved in it, but is the term impediment what has caused so many problems because the interpretations at least of uh, Rob Astorino of what impediments are are different than HUD's? Right, and I think that there, there are legal definitions that are part of it and that's part of the, the dialogue. But even when we get to the place of having that zoning analysis con conducted and completed, that's not the end of it. There's discussions at that point about how do you, what are some measures that can be taken to overcome those? Are some of those not the result of, uh, is the discrimination there or not there? It's really analyzing the impacts. And I think this should be a much more academic exercise that we engage in together to look at this as opposed to focusing on some sort of uh, discriminatory intent, which well, really uh, isn't where we're going with this. The idea though, that this is, uh, uh, Westchester uh, only, and, and again, the county executive also said that his county, Westchester, was singled out and that your agency is trying to bankrupt the county of Westchester. When you hear that, is, is there merit that Westchester was some singular case, really going to be the beta case that would then be worked out in Long Island and nationally here, and that, um, in effect, he's trying to stop government overreach gone wild? Absolutely not. Um, I am a relative newcomer to the situation. I've only been at HUD since January, but I can certainly affirmatively say that there is no intent to single out Westchester and that HUD is very dedicated to trying to resolve this and to keep the money in Westchester. If not, we wouldn't have just given a 30-day extension for uh, looking for other solutions uh, that may get to the bottom of this by working with the Board of Legislators. We'll talk about the Board in a second. Another constant complaint coming from the county executive office is they say, hey, listen, they told us to build 700 units. We're on track, if not ahead. We're being compliant. We're, we're compliant here. They just keep moving the goalposts on us. You can't win with HUD. The analysis was always part of the settlement agreement. There has been one analysis that was conducted, uh, a report that the monitor, the court monitor, conducted on socioeconomic uh, status and impediments under state law. That's an important piece of this, and we certainly want to see that incorporated into moving forward. But there's another piece that hasn't yet been done, and that is the racial analysis under the Federal Fair Housing Act. That was how this claim originally came about, and that analysis needs to be done. That's been there from the outset. 
the county executive also says, hey, uh, Westchester is the fourth most diverse county in the state of New York here. I don't know what they're looking at. Are you guys using this more on a town by town or city by city basis more than the aggregate of the county? It does look at each of the 31 municipalities individually and then collectively. So yes, that is a part of it. In terms of monies lost, there's already been grants um, that haven't gone to Westchester as a, con a consequence of this suit and more potentially. Give an idea of the math that we're talking about, both that has been lost, is being held up, and potentially down the road could also not go the way, in addition to the lawsuit um, that we're talking in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Right, so the 2011 funds that were reallocated uh, totaled $7.4 million. Um, and then what we're looking at right now is a total of about 5.2 million. Um, and the, you know, the reason why this is done is that if those funds don't get used, it's not as though we can keep rolling them year to year. We will lose them. They'll go back to Treasury. Um, so we have a very specific window in which we can reallocate them to other municipalities that are making a credible uh, attempt to further, further uh, affirmative housing. So. I know the Board of Legislature uh, in Westchester has been working on this. It's been uh, indicated pretty strongly that the county executive won't even consider this. They'll veto the thing outright if it gets through the legislature. How optimistic are you, since you've been dealing with the principles, that there is a deal to be had? Well, we think it, that there is enough potential there to push our timeline for reallocation to a smaller period, which obviously will put more pressure on us to get those funds reallocated if that's what it comes to. But we, we think that there is good faith on the part of the board. Um, they have started the legal analysis and has started the process, uh, given us a time frame for when they think that they can pass a law and try to get a supermajority in order to override a veto should that occur. So we are optimistic, um, cautiously optimistic, but certainly we do not want to leave any stone unturned in terms of trying to keep this $5.2 million in Westchester and to get to, th to the end of the settlement here. You guys are tired of this too, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and look, it's not, it's not good for anyone, and it's not good for HUD, and it's not good for these towns. Um, you can go, I've gone around the region, New York and New Jersey, and looked at how important CDBG funds and other HUD funding is to, it's game changing for communities. So I understand why Westchester is frustrated that he can't get this money, and I think we all just want to see a solution. In terms of the argument um, that County executive and a few others make that, hey, listen, you let HUD do this. Um, they're going to get rid of zoning altogether. And that's always been uh, in the purview of the communities to configure out the zoning. If they decide it, it'll be a game changer. And all of a sudden, they'll say that it's got to be a three bedroom apartment here, that it can't be something which will be unaffordable for all the folks here uh, to basically meet the guidelines that HUD's laying out. Is that what you guys want? Do you want to basically rezone the whole county? No, we're not going to get into the weeds of zoning at that level. What we want to ensure is that an analysis is done and then those municipalities have the responsibility for figuring out how they may tweak their zoning in order to overcome those challenges. That isn't something that we're going to tell the counties how to do. They will make those decisions on the zoning once that analysis is completed. You know, I remember actually in this building was the final county executive debate, not for the most recent election, but when then county executive Andy Spano was there with uh, Rob Astorino, who then was his Republican challenger. There seemed to be, at least on the stage that night, an acknowledgement that the deal that then county executive Spano had made with the feds, there was clear stipulations how it all worked out. I can't believe that I'm still talking about this more than four plus years later, but the confusion, I think, for a lot in the public is, well, wait a minute, have they changed the terms of the deal? Is the deal the deal and one party doesn't want to abide by it? Or is, are the feds, is HUD changing the terms of the deal as they go along? And, and that seems to be the most, in its essence, the crux of the question the general public seems to have. Are you guys changing the terms or redefining some of the language since the implementation of the deal you struck with Spano? No, this, the complaint originally was brought under the Fair Housing Act for disparate impact um, on minorities in housing. And that is still the issue that we are trying to get to the bottom of with this analysis. Um, I think that there may have been some confusion because one report was issued 
that looked at state law and some of the impacts, of the socioeconomic impacts. That's a piece of it, and, and there will be some overlap, most, most likely, with the analysis on racial disparate impact. But the original Fair Housing Act claim still revolves around doing that analysis, and it's, it's been the same from the outset. I won't put the words in your mouth, but I'll say if the chances of this thing getting done before the election, I think, slim um, in, the, in the governor's race for November. But when we get through the political season, do you think, whether it be for uh, the financial penalties that the county is looking at, whether it's just simply fatigue, that we will have a deal in a year from now? Uh, you uh, uh, won't have to be dragged back into the studio talking about this. You think, is there light at the end of the tunnel? I certainly hope so. And if this new potential direction with the Board of Legislators uh, proves to be a possible route, then I think we may get one before the election. Um, but we're going to continue to work on this, and hopefully having some new players in it um, will be helpful. I, I'd like to think that we can dial back some of the fervor on it and, and get back to really just looking at the analysis and working together. This should be a collaborative process. Well, I sure hope you're right here. It hasn't done wonders for the reputation of the county um, either. Um, but Holly, thank you. And hopefully, not that I don't look forward to sitting with you again, but a year from now, uh, we won't be having to, to have this similar conversation that seems to be on a permanent loop lately. Holly Light, thank you so much. Thank you, Rich.